Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC and this should be the final build video of the Tony Nyhouse Nat. Um, so this is going to be the second part of the final video which sounds a bit weird. The previous uh, final video which I'll stick a card up here somewhere um, was going to go on for too long so I've decided to split it into two basically. So, so this is the second part of that final video where we're just getting things finished, all the little bits and bobs that you have to do, um, like installing the radio gear, um, fitting the battery. I've also got to fit the canopy. Uh, and in the last video, we left it where I'd fitted the elevators and got those working. Um, so now I need to get on with the aerons, get those hooked up, get the control horns fitted um, and get the servos mounted. Uh, then I've got to flip the plane over uh, and then get the canopy mounted and I'm going to actually install some radio gear um, underneath the canopy which I think that'll look quite good because you'll be able to see all the flashing lights and that sort of stuff. Before we get onto the bench I uh, just want to say thanks so much to everyone that's subscribed already to my channel and if you are into fixed wing RC uh, mainly Boltzer, Nitro, uh, a little bit of FPV I do with some, some wings and uh, EDFs as well which is uh, another passion of mine then uh, you're going to want to subscribe to my channel. doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe. Um, if, you, um, if you haven't subscribed already, you just need a YouTube account, and it really helps me out. I'd love to try and get to 1,000 subscribers before the end of this year, so if you can help me do that, I would really appreciate it. Uh, and also, give me a like. That helps the videos appear on other people's feeds in YouTube, so that helps me out massively. Uh, and if you are interested in following along, then hit the bell icon and uh, then you'll be notified when I bring out the next video. So uh, thanks a lot for following along and uh, let's get onto the bench. Right then, so back on the bench. So the last episode got all the elevators hooked up, if you, um, if you saw that. Uh, so now what I need to do is get the ailerons hooked up to the servos. So just to get me started, I've mounted the servos, um, cut the holes out, which I did a little while back before I covered it, and I've just mounted the servos on each side in there. Um, I wouldn't say they are the strongest um, mounting because um, the screws are very small and the bolster is quite th soft so um, I've screwed them in. I've used, just used my um, pin vise um, little drill just to drill the holes, pilot holes, screwed those in but I'm not going to rely on those to be honest I think I'm going to just drop once I'm happy that it's all set up and working I'm going to just put a little bit, wick a little bit of thin CA in, in there um, just to sort of soak in and, and lock it into position I think will be a sensible option because I don't want these falling out whilst flying. Um, and then what I've got, to, because with this being like um, the Tony Nyhouse is, is kind of, you just get the wood, so it's like a wood pack basically, there's no um, um, accessories or anything like that with it. Um, you just get the plan and the wood, so you need to source all your own little uh, clevises and horns and bits and bobs like that. So I'm going to be using these for the aerons, and I actually got these off uh, my Z84, um, <coughs> which I'm now retiring because um, I can't. The, the, basically, the motor mount just keeps breaking every time I open thro full throttle, and I've got a plan for the radio gear and the motor in that anyway. So uh, keep posted. On the channel to learn about that. Um, so yeah, these are going to be ideal basically just to use as little push rods for the aerons. Um, so it's actually not far off as well, but it is it is a little bit too long. Um, however, in my box of tools for RC, I have got a Z bender which I've never used before. I, think I bought it ages ago. So I think what I'm going to have to do is cut these down a bit. Uh, and then um, use the Z-Bender just to uh, put a new Z-Bend in to get that secure. But before I do that, I need to just put the servo arms on. And what I've done with these, you do in the pack, you get a single servo arm like that in the pack already, but it's, it, it's so thin, uh, and I need to drill it out a little bit for these um, push rods that it doesn't leave you with much material left on the on the control horn uh, servo arm. So what I've done is I've actually taken the one that was a, a twin uh, servo arm and just uh, cut it off and filed it down and then used that and just drilled that middle hole out there so I've got a bit more material either side 
to use. Um, so I need to get these mounted on, which is obviously a nice easy job. Just get the, get the servo centered, get those positioned. And then what I've got to do is just sort of figure out where the control horn is going to be in relation to the servo arm and then mount the control horn, which again is a nice straightforward job. Um, so we'll get that done and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the uh, Z-Bend. Right then, so got the servo arm mounted and the control horn mounted and I've cut the old end, the old Z-Bend off this um, control rod and fastened the clevis into the horn and then I've marked a little mark right there uh, which is that mark there which is where I want it to go through the servo arm and I have just had a play with these Z-Bend pliers that I bought and basically what you do is I want the there is actually a little ridge for your uh, for the control rod to fit in and what I want is basically where that trough is there or I suppose you could say that peak there that's oops that's where it that's where you want your line to be lined up with because that's where it's gonna do it so it's kind of like this so let's go for it see what happens hopefully this is gonna work Sorry about the shake in there, it's quite hard to press. Yeah, so as you can see now, hopefully, it's bent it right on the uh, the mark there, so that should be okay. What I am going to do though is I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit because uh, this is way too long. So I'll just trim this over here. And let's see if my calculations are correct. So we'll feed that in there. Oh yes. That is spot on, I think. I've got some adjustment on this, obviously. So it does need, does need winding in a bit, because it's, although I am going to put it on this top one. Uh, let's just hook the servo tester up, get it into neutral again. Show you a better picture of it there, like that. Gone on nice. That's got that into neutral. How far off are we? I don't think we're a million miles away, but it is sticking up a little bit, as you can see, probably there. So I just need to wind this clevis in just a tad. Okay guys, that's looking pretty good. It's hard to show you on the camera. Hang on. Let me try this. So that's with the clevis fastened on. Looking pretty straight there. I could probably just, no, I think that's actually spot on. Absolutely spot on. So, let's just reposition this again. Let me just get this secured in place, like that, so that's clipped in. And then we slide the bit of fuel tube up. That is a nice, really nice solid connection. Let's see how well the elevator moves now though. Uh, elevator, aileron. Not bad guys, not bad. Plenty of movement there. I'm happy with that. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So basically just repeat the other side. So I'll get that done and show you once I've got that other side sorted. Okay, that's the aerons all hooked up. <clears throat> uh, I'm actually really pleased with the way these have gone on. Nice and neat. Um, those clevises uh, and control rods that I got from the Z84 are perfect. 
uh, and there's no play hardly at all um, when I move the air on. Obviously I've got the servos plugged in at the minute. There's very little play, which is perfect. Because obviously you don't want any movement there. Um, I've got <coughs> a wire lead. I've just hook, hooked these up to a wire lead. And if I just flip it over, we've got plenty of movement, I'm pretty sure. And the other thing that's nice as well is that it is moving quite nicely all the way along the surface, because obviously with the control horn only being at one end, sometimes this end doesn't come up very much if your uh, air on is sort of flexing a bit, but it's not doing that at all. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. The only thing I've got to do now is just, I am just going to run a bit of thin CA onto those servos just to really lock them in place because one of them is actually moving a little bit as, as we uh, move, the, move the servos just because they're just, they're just, you know, they're not fastened in very well. Um, so that's that done. Um, so I'll get those locked in with the CA and then my next job now is going to be um, I want to start planning out where I'm going to put my radio gear. So um, in my previous videos, I've mentioned that I'm going to be using one of these, which is the ZoHD Copilot system, uh, which I've used on a number of small models. And the reason, uh, there's two reasons why I, I, I want to use this uh, in this model. Um, number one is it, it's obviously very small. Um, <clears throat> but it's also very fast or hopefully will be quite fast and it will get out of sight very quickly um, and of course it's sometimes tricky to figure out which way around you are and that direction so if you do get into any trouble with the co-pilot on board flick a switch on my transmitter and it will return to home and just hopefully come back to me the other big reason is these OHDs have like a launch feature um, where you can you basically put it into return to home mode and throw the model um, and it will take off and um, you know get go into like a holding pattern um, in a return to home holding pattern um, which is brilliant for hand launch things and particularly uh, I've seen a few videos now starting to appear on YouTube I guess these are getting a little more popular of people launching these and they, they actually look quite tricky to to launch particularly if I'm if I'm on my own down the field um, so having that feature is going to be superb. What I don't use the SoHD for though is, it, is any sort of stabilisation or anything like that because I, I actually don't like the way this, it, it doesn't do wind rejection, it's, it's literally um, stabilisation so it keeps the model in a certain uh, state and it, it limits how much you can roll and pitch um, and it won't let you go upside down or anything like that which is great for beginners but um, no good for me so I don't use that side of it but it's literally just for the uh, return to home and the launch feature. And the other thing that I do on something like this, which needs, um, because it's it's an EDF, um, you know, and it's a, it's a flat, fairly flat wing and all that, it's not got a ton of lift being generated. Um, you need to really, the idea of these OHDs is that you throw it and then once it detects that it's going a certain speed, the it cuts, cuts the throttle in full throttle and, and kind of off it goes. It doesn't really work with something like this. You need the throttle on from the second you um, you know you throw it or before you actually throw it, you need it on full throttle to give you that maximum power. Um, so what I do is I mix the auxiliary channel with the throttle channel and then I plug my throttle into the auxiliary. Um, and the reason I do that is then I have full control over the throttle even when it's in return to uh, even when it's in launch mode. If you don't do that and you just plug directly into the throttle and then you you switch it into launch mode, it, it won't activate the throttle until it's until you've thrown the model basically. So that's that. Um, so what I'm going to do is get that mounted in there. Let's just unplug this now because we're done with that for now. Let's show you what we get in the box. Obviously this is not a review of the ZOHD or anything like this on this channel. Well, sorry, on this ep episode, should I say. I have reviewed these on my channel. You also get a nice little case with these, which is uh, handy for storing things in. So, we've got the main um, ECU, if you like, whatever you want to call it, mixer, um, there. So 
I think I'm going to have that sat here like this. Something like that, probably. Then you've got a little GPS receiver. So I'm going to put that on there. Like that. And then there's a couple of cables that I need to use. Um, I've obviously got the servo leads that need to go into this. And then there's also an S-Bus connection, which is going to go to my receiver, which I can't remember where it is. Oh, it's there at the end. So I'm going to plug my receiver into there. Uh, I've also got a cable going from the GPS to here as well. So I'm going to need to drill a little hole here for that to go through. And then a bigger hole here for all the servo leads to come out and everything. So I'll get that done. Uh, I'm going to hot glue these in position. So obviously this needs to be nice and secure. Um, because you don't want this to be moving around um, particularly if you're in return to home or, or launch mode because it will upset the, uh, the model. Um, receiver wise, just get my box of tricks down. I think I'm going to use some something like this, so this is Radio Master. I don't think you can get these anymore, which is a real shame. Um, but this is the R, whoop, when it decides to focus, the R161. Um, so this uses the FreeSky D16 protocol, but it's a little S-Bus receiver, so it's perfect for something like this. I'm just not quite sure where to mount this, so I don't think I want to mount this here. I think I'm gonna mount this inside somewhere, so I think that's the way I'm gonna go with it. So. Um, I'll just put this inside the bay there and just have the, the S-Bus cable going down to it and the um, yeah the servo leads will, will come up to this. So, need to drill some holes. So we'll get that done and come back to you. Okay, co-pilot is installed, radio gear is installed. We are good to go. I've got all the co-pilot set up. It's gone on there really nice. Just show you a bit of a close-up of that. So, drilled a couple of holes in there, one for the GPS and then one for all the cables to go through. Um, so I think that's going to look quite good under the cockpit because it has got you know various flashing lights and things like that, depending on what mode it's in. Uh, and that's nice and neat, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, I'm just going to turn it over. Um, so, just got the... A little Radio Master receiver mounted in there. I think you can just about see that. So that's just stuck down with a sticky pad. And then I've got the, well, you can't really see very well, but I've got the, oh, you can see there. Look, I've got the antennas going at 90 degrees to each other there. Um, the co pilot and the GPS have just stuck down with um, hot glue. So that's fine. Um, and then just to show you, I've got a, I've set up a new model. Uh, I just need to change the image because um, I need to connect to the computer and download a new image um, for the NAT. But I've got this all set up. Um, I've got full rate set in a minute, but you can see elevators working. Ailerons are working nicely. And then I've got it set up with the various modes. So if, if I hit this this way, mode. it goes into stabilize mode. Uh, and you get a solid LED, green LED, which I think you can just about see on there. And then if I flick it to return to home, return to launch. you can see it's flashing now, which means it's in return to home mode. Um, but it's not working properly at the minute because it needs to get a GPS signal, um, which is why it's not very happy at the moment. I also think the battery's sort of getting a bit low that I've been testing with. Um, actually, that did look like it was, uh, no, it's not got a GPS signal because that red light should be, oh, hang on. Do you know what? I think it has just got a GPS signal because that red light has just gone solid. Return to launch. Yeah, and that's why the air ones are flicking now because effectively it's trying to figure out how it's going to get it home. <laughs> So that's actually working, that's interesting. It's managed to get a GPS signal in the workshop. Normal mode. Anyway, 
that's definitely working and i've got the throttle set up with the mix so even in return to launch mode i can operate the throttle so that's all working that's all good very pleased with that we're ne nearly there all i've got to do now is put the canopy on um, so I'll do that in the next clip. I'm going to call it a night for tonight. Um, so what I'm going to do is just sort of fasten this on there. I might just put a little dab of um, a thick CA just in those corners there to hold it. But then the rest of it I'm going to hold down with some trim tape that I've bought. So I'll show you that in the next clip. So that's all that done. Oh yeah, of course, the other thing I've then got to play around with is, is um, getting some... The one thing I'm not too sure about is where the battery is going to mount. There is obviously a provision for it in here and, you, and it says in the instructions that they just use Velcro to hold the battery down. Um, but I'll, it all depends where the battery needs to be positioned to get the CG right and how much, how much sort of area there is for the Velcro to hold it because what I don't want is the... Um, there's just no, there's nowhere to put any uh, straps or anything like that for the battery, so you've literally just got to rely on the Velcro, which I'm not a huge fan of. But we'll just have to uh, see how that feels when I get the uh, bigger battery in. Uh, and then there's just one last thing that I need to do. But I can't quite think. Oh yeah, better get the fin put in before I fly it. Um, so I'm just waiting for the black um covering film which i've ordered which actually i've had delivered to the office but because i've been on holiday i don't know that it's um i've not got it yet basically so when i go back on monday i will pick that up get that covered and we'll get that put in and do you know what i think that's it done then once we've got the canopy on and the battery sorted thin on i've just got to do some very minor little bits um so what i do for um, like the other side of the horns, I, I just use some of this um, E6000 uh, glue, which is really good just for um, fastening on here. Uh, I need to trim these off as well, actually, but I can't quite get my plies on them, so I might have to get the Dremel with a little metal disc cutter and just uh, cut those screws off. But then just lock them in place with a bit of this uh, E6000, and it and it stops the. Uh, there's no risk of them coming undone, basically. Um, so just a few little bits to fettle like that and also using the 6000 <coughs> excuse me i'll do the same on these little nuts here on the ball joint so i'll just put a blob of e6000 on there just to stop those coming undone i know you could use loctite but you have to be careful with loctite um, next to plastic because it can actually corrode plastic sometimes so i prefer just to put a blob of um, the e6000 on those just to stop them coming off and yeah i think we will finally be done with this build once i've done those few bits so next clip um, i'll just show you what i'm going to do to get this canopy secured in place um, and then i'll show you the trim tape i'm going to use hopefully that will keep it in place i think pretty well um yeah and so um be back in a few seconds to sort that okay so canopy is on um, I've used some of this trim line tape um, it's JP J Perkin stuff I was hoping it would be a little bit more stretchy to sort of stretch it around these curves a bit like you can with uh, insulation tape it's quite stretchy and you can sometimes stretch it around these curves but it's not doesn't seem to be that stretchy so it was quite fiddly to get this on but I'm quite pleased with the finish. It's it's nice and symmetrical around both sides, uh, and it sealed it on really well. And what I found was where you have got a bit of a curve like this, you do obviously get some creases. Um, but I just got the iron, the the um, film iron on, very very gently, and just sort of dabbed it because this this doesn't react well to heat, but it does seem to get rid of those creases. Um, so that that's just a little thing there that helped out but um, yeah <coughs> that's gone on and it's nice and solid as well um, 
so yeah and actually the the black of the trim does match perfectly with the the black paint i know it's black is black but you do get different shades of black obviously um so that's good then the other thing i've done is i've recovered the fin uh in some black film so um what i've got to do now is get the fin mounted in here which is obviously very easy that just slots in place uh, and then i've just got to put a bit of ca in there just to secure that in place uh, then it's going to be a case of getting the decals on um, and then we've just got to do the very few last little bits like i mentioned like just putting the shoe goop on these um, fixings just to uh, secure those in place and it's going to be done so i think i'll get that thin glued in place and then we'll take a look at the decals we've got to put on it and then we're almost there we are almost there okay so fins glued into place that's looking really good Really pleased I went with the black one. Um, here's the, whoops. Here's the decal pack. So I bought this from Tony Nyhouse. So you get a couple of these large roundels which go on the top of the wings. Um, these two which go on the tail. Then you've got a couple of danger signs which would normally go at the front of the intakes. Uh, and then we've got some smaller roundels. One of those goes ab about here. And then you've got the small registration mark which goes around about there, like that. And then underneath, on the wing, um, you have another roundel which goes on there. And then the, the big registration mark sort of goes at an angle well, in line with the with the wing. Um, so, what I thought I would do is start with the roundels on the top. I've never been, I'm never a big fan of putting decals on because it's you sort of think it's going to be easy, and it's usually quite difficult to get them on, get them all symmetrical, and that kind of thing. But what I've done for these rounds is I've just put a tiny little mark here. See if you can see that. Yep. Yeah. So I've measured that in relation to the wing tip which you can see you can actually see the join of the wing tip through the film and then this this uh, center sort of joining piece so i've measured the distance of that there and same on the other side so i know that they're in the same place and then what my plan is is to put the roundel the center of the roundel and i've just put a mark underneath and line that up basically with that dot and stick it down so that's the theory let's see if we can get it to work first job is I've got to peel this top section off so there's my round all there and I can still see the little hole I've made in there so let's see if we can actually do this It's going to be tricky as always. Take this off now. Oh, yes. Instantly starts to bring it to life once you put these on. Right, let's try and do the same with the other side. See what I might do with this is I might make the dot slightly bigger. See if I can do that. And then let's try. 
try and do the same again. So what I did was I sort of curled it up so I can get it lined up exactly with that dot like that. There we are. Looking good already, look at that. It's amazing the difference it makes, just putting those on. Already starting to look very cool. So, um, what I'll do is I'll um, crack on putting the rest on. Obviously these ones should be a little more straightforward because um, they're gonna, <coughs> they're gonna go, mm, Let's see, probably not, that's probably the wrong one, is it? Yeah, so that's that's just going to line up with the bottom of the uh, fin. So all I've got to do there is just make sure I get it in the right position each side from the leading edge to make sure it's symmetrical. But as long as I line it up with the bottom there, should be fairly straightforward. So that one's okay. Um, these these little danger signs will just measure I'll put them parallel with the edge of the intake there and just measure the middle of that so that's fairly straightforward and then this smaller registration again we can just sort of get that level with the top of the um, elevator that should be that should uh, look fine like that and then this smaller Round, this smaller round or here um, it's only really going to fit in one position vertically on this bit again it's just a case of measuring um, probably take a measurement back from the aileron to where I want the middle of the roundel to be um, yeah so I'm going to crack on with that and hopefully the next time you see it well, basically, the next time you see it, it is going to be done at last with all the decals on. I'll get these ground off and, uh, yeah, it's exciting times because now it's really starting to look superb after all this time building it. So I shall see you in a few seconds to show you what it looks like. All right, then. So here we are and uh, a slight change of scenery. Um, it's pretty miserable grey and cold day out there. Um, so I thought I'd come inside uh, to my uh, kitchen uh, just to sort of show it off in a bit of a better light really and it's a lot easier for me to get the camera uh, around it. So I'll show you a close up in a few minutes um, but this is what it looks like from the underneath. So I've got those decals on underneath uh, and then we'll do a quick whiz round with the camera in a minute to show you it in a bit more detail. Um, so just a few final thoughts because uh, this is the end of my uh, sort of build videos of this obviously next video of this next episode is going to be the maiden um, which i will be pretty nervous about um, it's probably going to be one of the most nerve-wracking maidens i've done i think because um, i have taken quite a while to build this um, you know it's not uh, it's got a bit more sweat and tears put into it than uh, than just putting say a phone model together um, so obviously you know don't want to go and crash it or lose it on the first attempt and also <clears throat> I'm going to use the co-pilot launch system as you know I've got that here and I'm not I'm still trying to think the best way to do that because at the moment uh, what I'm thinking of doing actually is for the for the very first flight or a couple of flights is, is launching it and trying to do it without the auto launch system uh, two reasons for that number one 99% of the time I've used it it's worked but I have had a couple of times where, uh, for whatever reason, the, the, the plane sort of, uh, it's took off and it's, it's gone along, um, you know, probably about this high off the ground and has never actually gone into sort of the auto launch sequence and started climbing. Um, and I have had one hit a tree before for that reason. So obviously I, I want to avoid that. Although I, I will stress that that's only happened to me once and I've used it 
lots of times. Um, the other thing that I have struggled with a few times when you do a maiden from the auto launch is because it takes control of the stability and it flies it nice and uh, level, as soon as you flick it out of that, it's in the, the, the model's instantly untrimmed. And uh, I have had a couple of occasions where you flick it out and it literally just flips or climbs or dives or whatever. And it can be quite tricky in that moment to get it trimmed up. Um, and it sometimes seems easier to, to if, you launch, if you hand launch it yourself, you've instantly got that feel as soon as it leaves your hands of, of where the trim is and, and if you need to hold a bit of right in and up and etc. And it's easier to actually get your head around how it needs trimming rather than just switching the auto launch off and as I say you're into uh, you're not quite sure what to expect so that's why I might try it like that but <clears throat> anyway we'll cover that off uh, on the maiden video um, so a couple of final thoughts on it um, it's taken me quite a long time to build um, so you know my spare time is, is limited uh, and in the time I've built this, I think we've in the UK, we've had three prime ministers, uh, a queen and a king. Um, so that's quite impressive. Um, but a uh, couple of questions that I was thinking to sort of go over. So number one, should I have chosen this uh, for my first model um, to get back into building Boltzer uh, aircraft, which is something I've not done for, a, for you know, a good 20 years? The answer to that question is probably no, I shouldn't have chosen it. Um, reason being, it is relatively straightforward build. Um, you know, it's got nice solid wings, which you can't get much easier than that, really. Um, but, and this is no criticism whatsoever of, of the plans or anything. You know, uh, it's, it's been quite an enjoyable build. But from a from effectively a beginner's point of view, the parts uh, don't lock into place. You know, you, you often see a lot of these uh, bolts of kits where the, the parts have got all the interlocking tabs and all that sort of stuff and it almost just locks into place on the bench before you even put the glue in and it's really easy to make sure it's square and all that sort of stuff. This isn't like that, everything's sort of done freehand if you like and you have to make sure the formers are square with whatever equipment you've got to do that, then glue them in place. Um, so it just makes it a little trickier and that's something I probably did struggle with a little bit. Um, so, so that's that. Um, perhaps in hindsight, if this, if you, you know, if it's a first ever bolts to build from a kit or from a plan or whatever, then maybe go for something uh, a little bit more boxy and, and simple. I would say. Um, then, secondly, uh, is it going to win any scale competitions? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, it's um, it does look like a gnat. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it looks quite a lot like a gnat, but. There's certain things that I've not done, so I've not like detailed the cockpit and all that sort of stuff. You could obviously put a lot more effort into that sort of thing, but um, you know I'm, I'm keen to get this flying. Um, and is it gonna win any uh, master model builder competitions? Uh, that is absolutely not. Um, but nevertheless, um, even though, you know, someone who with a lot more skill and experience than me could have done uh, a much better job than I have, uh, I am still quite pleased with the result. Um, and I'm quite pleased with the covering as well, which again is something that's not easy to do um, if, you've, if you've never done it before, if you've not done it for a long time. And this, once again, was probably not the, the, the best model to, to get back into it with, particularly because um, the wings you have to attach to the fuselage first before you sort of cover it, which, which is tricky because normally you would just cover a fuselage on its own and cover the wings on their own. It's a lot easier to do that, but you have to do this all in one. And because the fuselage has got this sort of turtle deck double profile here, again, that made it quite tricky to get the cover in to shrink along here and make that nice and neat. But uh, aside from those things, uh, I am really pleased with the way it looks. Um, it feels really nice and solid. It's really nice and light as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Maiden in this and, and I hope it takes us, you know, bog standard 3S 2200 pack uh, which is, you know, people have got loads of those. So this really is going to be something that hopefully I can chuck in the car and um, and just take down to the field and have a, a few sessions and, and some fun with. Um, and it should, according to the instructions, get between five and six minutes out of a battery, um, which I think is it sounds relatively uh, sensible to me because I've got another EDF model and I can get at least 
three and a half to four minutes out of that, but that's got a 70 mil fan on it, whereas this has only got a 50 mil. So it should be a little bit more um, efficient on the battery, the, the smaller fan. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go with it. So um, I'll get it on the worktop and we can have a closer look at it. But just to say, really appreciate everyone who's followed, followed along with this build. Um, if you have enjoyed it, then of course, um, if you can help me out by giving me a thumbs up and really help me out by subscribing to the channel, which I'm trying to build to at least a thousand subscribers, you know, I'd like to get there. So help me out with that if you can, I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And if you want to watch more of this sort of thing, this is what I'm going to be focusing on now going forward is bolts of builds and nitro and, and that sort of stuff. Um, then you know you want to follow along with the channel. I've already got my next project lined up, which is going to be another Nitro and Bolts of Build. Um, and thank you very much for all those people who subscribe to the channel and have followed along and for all the comments. Uh, quick shout out to uh, Cliff Harvey, who's made a couple of comments, um, helpful comments and tips and things like that, as along with the build. So thanks, Cliff. Hope you're watching. Um, yeah, and so uh, thanks a lot and I will see you soon for the next one.